Hey there everybody, it's Betsy from Story Drawing Skills, and in episode 4 I'm going to develop my comic story without a script. But first I had to figure out like what can my characters actually do. I knew I wanted a battle, and I know that they have different magics, so I just jotted down some notes about what they can do on the left hand page there, and then I wanted to figure out a little bit more about the tearing of magic. I knew I wanted this like magic shield and it gets um, little tears in it that uh, my characters have to go and fix. But I wanted to take some notes down about like what causes the tears, how do they find the location of these tears, and also just used it as an excuse to use some little memo note um, stickies that my brother got me from Japan. Um, you know, how are these tears mended? Like these are all parts of the story that I need to know. And also just like what happens during a tear, like why is a tear bad, what, you know, what will it do? So I started jotting down some notes about the tear, I knew I wanted it to be like a geyser, or not a sunspot, I meant a solar flare, okay, where something is, you know, building up pressure and then, you know, it, it breaks, it slips, and so that's what makes the tear. And something bad should happen, so I figured that this sudden release of magic uh, maybe creates like weird monsters or you know, plants come alive or something like that. So how did my characters find these tears? Um, you can see that I crossed out the rumors and decided that, you know what, they're just going to follow orders. Like, there's going to be some kind of organization that actually, you know, uh, monitors the shield and it's like, oh, we have a tear in sector, you know, five or whatever, go fix that. So how do we mend these tears? Because I have this balance of three magic, I figure that a terror is created when one of these magics like gets to be too much. So then you have to get the other two and you know just restore the balance in there, kind of restore the ratio again. And then I wanted to just make a note of like how do you become a part of this organization. At first I wanted voluntary, then I thought no, it's going to be mandatory. It's going to be actually kind of low level, like community service, like a punishment. And it would put a nice little mystery as to why are these three characters doing community service? Like, what did they do that they have to, um, you know, now serve their time? So this is how I plan out my stories without a script. I get a bunch of sticky notes. These are just like dollar sticky notes from Target when it was Christmas time. So there's little snowmen. But I just put, start putting down things that I know I want to happen. Like, I know they're going to mend tears, I know they're going to arrive at the tear, even though I wrote that R kind of weird. And, um, you know, they're going to fail during the mid-opening battle. I just start jotting down my ideas about what I want to happen in the story, and I can rearrange them really freely when I put them on sticky notes like this, so that I can then add something in between, or like I'm about to add an explosion there <laughs> in between the story beats. And just making a note of they do like a blasting off again, like Team Rocket from Pokemon. And, uh, you know, when I put in my transitions, like I want some kind of, uh, campfire scene. You know, how do they survive, um, the blasting off again? Somebody's gonna cast some cushion magic of some kind. And so there I am just like rearranging how I want this to happen. And then I remembered a really great tip. Um, that I heard in a workshop where you want something to go well and then not so well and make sure that you don't have too many things in a row that are not going well or too many things that are um, going well because then it just gets boring. So things like, um, you know, panicking about going splat, the purple, that's a down moment, and uh, Casting the cushion magic to save them, yay, that's, you know, good. And when they get orders, that's, you know, kind of neutral, actually. And so I'm going through and just marking them with purple or green. Actually, the boom title should have been purple as well. Oops, oh well. But this just helps me see um, that I'm not spending too much time on downer stuff and not too much time on um, safe and happy stuff either. So that's um, something that helps me with the pacing of the story. Rearrange my camera there. These come and take up a lot of space. So that is about it. Oh, I'm going to write one more. Oh, that's when the plan is not working. We need an idea. I think because I had um, not too many details about the battling the monster. 
So then I put that they need a new idea, and it's, you know, it's risky, but they're going to do it, and they're going to try it. And that's um, kind of a, you know, a down point where we're not sure this is going to work for them or not. So that is uh, my my beats. And then in my book, my little idea book, I'm just going to um, put these sticky notes in and write in a little bit more detail what's going to happen during this beat. So I'm just making notes about I want it to be rocky terrain and something kind of like the Be Prepared sequence in Lion King where they had, you know, rocks and green geysers. I didn't like that pen much though, so I switched. <laughs> so there's lots of little rock monsters attacking. And, you know, I want the elemental... I have to just use a um, description of the types of magic I use because my characters don't have names yet. But uh, I decided that the academic one, sorry I'm out of frame here, is going to be providing shields to her teammates. And the beast one is going to be using bear magic for swiping off the little rock guys. And then the elemental one is going to end the fight with fire magic, but it ignites the gases and causes um, the big explosion that makes them go boom. And um, since they are in shields, the explosion is just going to like propel them into the sky in the blasting off again type manner. And um, you know the elemental one is going to be the one that's like, oh my gosh, I'm going to die. This is not good. And then the academic magic one is going to take away their solo shields because I had a limitation in her magic about she can't do too many things at once. And she's going to make a new spell that uh, makes like a big bubble for them to land on and they're going to like pop very comedically and then you know land with some bumps and bruises. On a new page to help with the transition now they're you know it's nighttime and they're around the campfire and arguing uh, is taking place between the academic one and the elemental one about the importance of like sticking to a plan. I think that the reason they fail in the first fight is going to be because the elemental one did that fire magic without um, sticking to the plan. So uh, just writing down some notes about how the beast one is not going to be in the argument so much. She's going to be just doing the cooking, and she's going to grab the new orders which come via pigeon or owl or something, I don't know. And the next location that they have to go to is up a mountain. So I also wanted, um, you know, a little footnote about their failure and how, you know, they're going to be docked and pay, or like this is their last chance to get their act together. So in the morning, I don't quite know how I'm going to transition to it, um, the academic one and the elemental one are trying to, you know, commit to a plan. And whatever that plan is, it's going to depend on the tear being on land. And when they arrive, the tear is in the middle of a lake. So it's like, oh my gosh, our plan is not going to work anymore. So the academic one is going to propose to make stepping stones out of her shields for the elemental one to get closer enough to mend the tear with the beast one on standby, maybe? I'm not sure. That sounds kind of boring. And it works at first, but, but, I had the note about a monster appear, so it's going to be like a lake snake or a sea serpent, some kind of thing like that. And um, the beast is going to use, like, frog magic to give her frog legs, and she, like, jumps and... Um, saves the elemental one out of the snake's attack range. And they're going to be trying to fight it at first, but it has a uh, really thick, scaly skin, and so they can't really penetrate it. So the elemental one needs to use like her last fully charged stone, but they'll have to get the snake to like eat it so that it um, can you know, not have to penetrate through the hide. And the beast one changes to you know, like wings, and flies the elemental one above the snake, and the snake is going to have something kind of like Hyper Beam from Pokemon, and there's going to be like a shield to deflect it away maybe. These are all just, you know, ideas that I'm throwing out and I might change later, but uh, the elemental one is going to throw her Firestone into the snake's mouth, and that's going to KO that boss or like distribute the magic again so that it's just a regular snake again and not a monster. So there's a limited amount of time to mend the tear after they beat the boss. And I think all three of them are going to have to work together. Not quite sure how that works yet. But then somehow we're going to cut to a pigeon with their report returning back to the organization home base. And there'll be some kind of crazy notes like little kid doodles of, you know, how they got the tear thing mended. <laughs> and that will be the end. And maybe if I have time or I want to, I'll put some bonus notes and materials 
about how the magic system works and how tears are created and like the history of how this shield organization came to be. I'm going to summarize the process just in case there's somebody who would like to try out this story beats method, but my demonstration was a little all over the place, so if you need a step-by-step -step guide, here it is. Step one, you need to know what your characters can do. They don't need to have names, they don't need to have designs yet, you just need to know that there's one who can do explosions, and there's one who can run really fast, or there's one who can fly, like you just need to know what kind of powers you have at your disposal so that you know how these characters can go about problem solving. Speaking of problem solving, that's number two. Step two is that you need to have a problem. And my problem, of course, is the tears and the magic shield, but a problem could also be uh, a dragon, you know, attacking the town, or it can be a troll, or it can be an evil wizard, or it can be a flood, like it can be whatever you want it to be, but there needs to be a problem for your characters to solve. Once you have your problem, that is your very first story beat. The very first sticky note that I wrote was Mend the Tear. The very second one was I needed my characters to arrive at the tear, but if I left those two story beats side by side, they just, you know, show up and they solve the problem, that would be boring. So the next one I wrote was that they are going to battle before they can mend the tear. So how do they know how to arrive at the tear? Well, they have to get orders. Once I had those four story beats of they're going to get orders, they're going to arrive at the tear, they're going to battle, and then they're going to mend the tear, then I could just start thinking of things that I personally wanted to include, and that was starting the comic not with the boring part of getting orders, but by showing them in the middle of another battle um, with a tear and it not going so well so that I introduce to my audience my characters and how they're not fully competent. And that's how your story beats will grow. You'll just ask yourself questions of, well, how did they get there? Or, you know, what happens once this plan fails? Or things like that, where you will have to come up with another story beat that answers that. Like I had the explosion, and that was fun, and it wasn't until near the end that I went, wait a minute, how did they survive this explosion? So that's how your story will naturally expand itself, is just by making the events connect, like what makes sense, or you know what is needed so that it will make sense. And then of course you can add your you know cool, fun, or just you know things you personally want to include, like maybe some jokes or you know comedic stuff that isn't totally necessary to the story, but because that's your personal style, you want to include it. Like, that's fine too. Just write down all your ideas on sticky notes, and you can assemble and reassemble and reorganize just, you know, for hours if you don't watch it. <laughs> but you can just rearrange them and see how it progresses, and I find it to be a really useful tool. Last tip for this video is to not use too many sticky notes to describe your story at first. If you're doing like a 20 to 24 page comic, then you want to keep your sticky notes under 15. And the reason for that is because even though you can write down in a sentence something that happens in your story, like, oh, they defeat the monster, that sentence of defeating the monster is going to take way more than one panel or one page even. It's going to probably take two or three pages for me to show how my characters are casting spells and dodging attacks and you know, all this stuff that's action-based, that's going to take a lot of space, a lot of panels. So it's naturally going to expand beyond the 15 sticky notes. And one note does not equal a page. That's what I'm kind of trying to get at. You have to be aware that the sentences are naturally going to expand into more pages, more panels. So try to keep it as simple and as short and limited to maybe 15 sticky notes or less for that first pass. And then you'll see as you start adding details that it's going to get longer on its own. So that is how I use story beats instead of a script to get my story going. And I hope it's something that you can try out and help you get over that script stage if you're um, you know, not very keen on script writing like I am. So let me know how that worked out for you in the comments or just by giving me a thumbs up. And next time I'll get to do finally some drawing on how my characters actually look, and also pick some names for my characters. So until then, happy drawing everybody!